Welcome back. We've got another episode prepared for you. You know, I was looking in the mirror before the show and I saw my reflection and I said, ah! Once I recovered, I thought, there are some mirrors that make us look good. Some mirrors make us look strange. And some people make us feel good too, make us feel alive. Now I'm surrounded by people that make me feel alive. Do you guys feel alive? Yeah! Do you guys feel good? Yeah! And where are you from? A school that teaches its students to think right and do right. Let's meet Seoul Jamjun Elementary School to build their knowledge and to prepare themselves for the global age. They are studying very hard. English, in particular, is their favorite subject. 날마다 즐겁게 공부할 수 있어서 너무 좋아요. Students learn to broaden their minds through reading, and they also learn about common sense, manners, and ethics. Diving and soccer are two of the most popular sports at this school. Physical education keeps them fit and healthy. Everybody begins on equal ground, on the ground. But there are only 10 spots available in the next round, so you've got to compete. How? Well, you hear a series of questions, different topics, and you get as many right as possible. If you get a lot right, you're probably going to beat the others and move on. Good luck to everybody. And we have someone helping us who's very grounded. It's Tommy. <laughs> hey there, Isaac, and hey there, super kids. Well, you know earlier how Isaac was talking about different kinds of mirrors. Well, the ones that kind of make you look a little better and a little taller are actually called concave mirrors. Did you know that most doors use concave mirrors? I wonder why. Well, if you think about it, it makes you look better in the outfit, then it'll persuade the customers to buy the outfit. Well, anyways, I'm pretty sure what you really want to hear is the first question to this round. So listen carefully, because here I go. This helps nutrients in our body do their job. There are about 30 types of this. Its names are A, B, C, and so on. You'll find a lot of these in vegetables and fruit. What is the substance called? This helps nutrients in our body do their job. There are about 30 kinds. A, B, C, and so on. You find these a lot in vegetables and fruit. What is this? Five, four, three, two, and one. Raise your boards. Keep them up. And the answer is vitamin. Vitamin, keep it up, keep it up. Vitamin. Vitamins. Now, taking in medicine is good, but what's better is taking in vitamins by eating lots of vegetables and fruits. So, you know, eat a lot of vitamins by eating vegetables and fruits. Now, this next question might be a little easier for those of you who like science, okay? Uh, so, listen carefully. Here I go. This is the only metal that is in a liquid state at room temperature. It is used, often used in thermometers. It is also the closest planet to the sun in the solar system. What is this metal called? The name of a metal. Is it gold, silver? It's the only metal that is in a liquid state 
when it's room temperature, often used in thermometers. It is also the closest planet to the sun in the solar system. What is this metal? What is this metal? Five, four, three, two, and one. Please raise your boards. Raise them high. Not easy. Super Kids is not easy. The answer is Mercury. Mercury. Unlike vitamins, mercury, well, it's not good for your body, so be careful not to eat it, you know, just in case the thermometer breaks and then you see leak liquid and you're kind of feeling thirsty, so just make sure you don't eat it. Okay, now this next question, hmm, kind of looks a little hard, but I'm pretty sure y'all will all get it right. Now, listen carefully. This word is used to describe something that looks much better or more expensive than it really is. The Little Mermaid in the story meets a tragic ending when she becomes this. You can make this with water and soap. What is this? This word is used to describe something that looks much better or more expensive than it really is. That's one hint. Next hint. The Little Mermaid in the story meets a tragic ending when she becomes this. This is not The Little Mermaid, the movie, but another story. Now here's the best hint. You make this with water and soap. Five, four, three, two, three. Raise the boat. Keep it up. Raise it high. And the answer is bubble. Bubble, bubble. Keep it up, keep it up. B-U-B-B-L-E. That's right, the answer was bubble. I love playing with bubbles, but you know, the only sad part is that right after you make it, it doesn't really last long and you know, it pops. But anyways, like bubbles. Now the next question is a math question. I love math, so be careful. You know, there's lots of numbers. Take down some notes while I'm reading the question. Okay, here I go. There is a vase with a tulip in it. The flower and the vase together cost 20,000 won. If the price of the vase is 10,000 won, more expensive than the tulip, then how much is the tulip by itself? There's a vase with a tulip in it. The flower and the vase together cost 20,000 won. The price of the vase is 10,000 won. More expensive than the tulip. So how much is the tulip by itself? Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, you math geniuses. Let's see if I should take you shopping. The answer is 5,001. 5,000. Whew, that was a hard math question. But I do know that my mom's favorite flowers are tulips. I should go to that store and buy some tulips for her. All right, here's the last question. It's about, well, an animal. Do you guys like animals? Well, who knows, because your favorite animal might be the answer to this question. Now, listen carefully, because it's the last one. There's a story about when Persian soldiers invaded Egypt in 6th century BC. According to the story, they abused this animal. The Egyptians couldn't stand it and eventually surrendered. What is this animal, which is feared by mice and considered sacred by Egyptians? What's this animal? It is feared by mice. 
and considered sacred by Egyptians. Five, four, three, two, one. Please raise your boards. A lot of right answers. Let's make sure the correct answer is... Cat! Good job. All of you did a fantastic job answering those questions and you will move on. Of course, in the next round, more hurdles, more challenges, but uh, I think you'll do a fine job. Thank you very much, Tommy, for doing such a fine job. You're welcome, Isaac, and congratulations to the five ladies and the five gents who are going on to the next round, and I'll see you soon. The perfect 10, great balance. Let's do that. Let's go to the next round and meet Tommy once again. Come on, let's go. We have another great round prepared for you, everybody here, especially me, because I love to learn about countries. I love to travel. I like to go, go, go. Now we're going to go to another amazing country. So far we've been to about 20 of them. Okay, where are we going today? Look. China is the largest in the world by population and the third largest by area. There are many historical cities with cultural heritage, such as Beijing, Nanjing, and Xi'an. China has very unique traditions and characters that have a long history. Once people called China the sleeping tiger, but now the tiger has awakened and it is becoming a global leader, influencing the world in areas of politics, economics, culture, and sport. Let's find out more about China. Definitely awake. Amazing history, very big in so many ways, and it has a lot of firsts historically and uh, philosophically in so many ways. It's amazing. So let's go to this amazing country and with this amazing lady. Wow, you look amazing, Tommy. I'm back, and thank you, Isaac. The, the, the clothing that I'm actually wearing is a traditional clo clothing called Xinbao in China. And, well, you know, the fact that it is a traditional clothing, it kind of has like a modern chic style to it. And I really like it. Do you like it? I do like it. Hopefully, all our participants like this question. Get ready. This connects the major cities in the southern region, such as Nanjing and Wuhan, as a transportation route. In China, it is called Changjiang, which means a long river. What is this river that is third longest in the world? All right, number 23. Yangju Liber. Good job, yeah! Good job, Mr. Giraffe. That's how it's done. First time you get it right, you get a headband. Second time, you move on. There are five spots, there are 10 of you. Good luck. Here's the next question. Traditionally, Red is considered a lucky color. Even the national flag of China has a red background. Then how many stars are on the national flag of China? Whoa, number 21, the first to press down. There are five stars. Good job. Yeah. Five stars, correct. And I believe the dummy, who always has great props, has the flag in our studio. Is that right? 
That's right, Isaac. Right next to me, I have the flag of China. As you said, in, as it said in the question, now it has a red background with five stars, one big star and four little stars right next to it. Did you know that this model was actually selected from more than 3,000 other designs? Crazy, huh? Oh yeah, that was back in 1949. Amazing. Okay, well thank you for that prop, and we're going to move on to the next question. In old tales from China, you will often hear about scholars who study and read books. You may have heard a story about a scholar who was too poor to buy lamp oil. So he had to read at night using the light from this. What is this insect that lights up at night? Number 14, first to press down. Firefly. Bingo! <laughs> Catch him, put him in the jar, some container, and you study by it. That's amazing. Okay, we continue. In the past, European countries sent many explorers in search of new continents. China had a considerable influence on this. China's navigation technologies were very advanced because of this object. What is this object that tells the direction using a magnet? Once again, 14. Okay, number 14, if you get this question right, you're gonna be the first one to go on to the next round. Yeah. yeah. Okay, do you think you have the right answer? Yes. Okay, well, let's hear it. Compass. Compass. Yeah! It's a good job! Moving on! <laughs> His compass was pointing right to one of the spots. He will move on. You gotta have a compass if you go camping, just in case. All right, let's move on to the next question. His father was a poor farmer, but he grew up to become a politician and a communist leader. In 1940, he won in the Chinese Civil War and founded the People's Republic of China. Today, you will see this person on all Chinese paper money. Who? Number three. Mao Zedong. Good job. Mao Zedong! You know, I once uh, went to China and to Pekdusan via China. And I remember uh, spending the money there, didn't have a lot of it, but if I'm not mistaken, Mao Zedong is like on every type of currency. Uh, Tommy, you wouldn't happen to have some other currency, would you? Um, no, I, I, I don't. Okay, <laughs> there's just too many. Um, well, right here, very colorful, I have the currency right here. This is um, the painting on every type of currency is Mao Zedong. Now I think he made a big impact in the history of China and that's why his face is on every type of currency in China. I wish I was on a currency <laughs> somewhere. Maybe someday, maybe someday. Okay, we will continue. Here's the next question. Before China opened its doors to the world for trade and cultural exchange, people called China this curtain. This plant is not common in the West, but easily found in China. Its shoot is even used in Chinese cooking. What is this plant that has hollow branches? Okay, let's get the mic to number 34. Ken Briggs. No, not the answer. Whoa, number 21. Bamboo. Good job. Yeah, excellent. Very strong, very useful, and of course, very common in China. Bamboo. All right, two spots filled, three to go. Next question. China has the largest population in the world. So the number of people that travel to go back to their hometowns on festive holidays is also the largest in the world. On Chunjie, which is China's number one national holiday, tens of thousands of people take to the road to visit their families. Then what day does the Chinese holiday Chunjie refer to? If you think about holidays in Korea, traditional Korean holidays, the two big ones, one is pretty much the same. Okay, let's see if we got an answer. January 1. Uh, 
we don't exactly want the date. We want the name of the day. So could you give us the name of the day? New Year's. Good job. Yeah, New Year. Very good. Yeah, that's the biggest, biggest one. A lot of traveling happens then. A lot of uh, rice cake soup is eaten then in Korea. It's a big, big holiday. Okay, three spots filled, two to go. Here is the next question. The high mountain regions of Northwest China and Tibet is where you will find this. It likes to eat bamboo leaves. As the animal that symbolizes China, it looks like a small bear and has black patterns on white. What is this animal? Number 13. Panda. Good job. Pandas, scary bears, attack and kill people. Ah, you scare me. Tommy, you didn't have a panda in the studio, do you? <gasps> Isaac, I think you have the totally like the wrong image of panda bears. They are so cute, and I couldn't bring my real panda, but I did bring a little little stuffed animal. It's so cute. I mean, because it's so cute, it's like so popular because of its cute appearance. But you know, what's really heartbreaking is that it's kind of in the danger of extinction. So that kind of breaks my heart. Please take it out of the studio, Tommy. I'm scared. Next question. <laughs> this started around 1000 BC, and today it has become a form of sports and exercise for training the body and the mind. Many of the movements look like animals fighting. It is the martial art that represents China and is often seen in movies. What is this? Many of the movements look like animals fighting. It is the martial art that represents China. Often seen in the movies, you may have seen an animated movie where a panda is doing this. 15. Kung Fu. Oh, yeah! Ah, 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 he's trying to get me. Ah, it's a good thing I know some Kung Fu. Actually, we invited someone to give us a demonstration of how it's done correctly. Please give a warm welcome to our Kung Fu specialist. Because everybody is Kung Fu Yeah. We like the show. We're having a good time. And since he's our guest, we're going to uh, ask a few questions. We'll let uh, Dami do the honors. Wow, that was an amazing performance. Ah, 정말 너무 멋져요. 일단은 콩포에 대한 설명 좀 부탁드릴게요. 어떤 무술인지 좀 설명 좀 부탁드릴게요. 콩포는 중국 전통 무술이고 공부를 하면 건강해지고 자신감도 생기고 좋아요. 아, 네. 또 지금 보여주신 공연 중에서 이제 매가 날아가는 그런 동작도 보여줬다고 그랬는데 그거에 대해서 좀 설명 부탁드릴게요. 음. 매가 날아가는 것처럼 몸을 날라가지고 발을 차는 동작이에요. 아, 네. 아, 앞으로도 정말 멋진 모습 부탁드리고요. 오늘 나와 주셔서 너무 감사드립니다. 고맙습니다. 예. Middle schooler. Of course, lots of confidence and uh, very healthy. 
Let's go to our next question. What comes to mind when you hear the following words? Song Dynasty, Oriental Pearls Tower, Putong, Yangtze River. Those four hints are connected to the answer. Song Dynasty, Oriental Pearls Tower, Pudung, and Yangtze River. Of course, it is something connects the four. It might even be a city. Beijing? Number 23. Shanghai. Shanghai. Good job! Uh -huh. Doing the Shanghai twist. <laughs> okay, four spots filled, one to go. I see a few people with those headbands on. This could be the last question. Maybe, maybe not. Here it is. In China, people call this Yang Tao. It is a fruit very rich in vitamin C. It originally came from China, but because New Zealand developed it into the popular fruit that it is today, the fruit has become a symbol of New Zealand. Kiwi. Good job. Kiwi! Very nice job, Shrek. <clears throat> you always have that, that green look, A, like a kiwi, on the inside. All right, delicious questions await. Oh, Here's the next one. China has the largest population in the world and has many famous athletes and sports players. In particular, China has been world's number one in this sport. In the 1970s, China even exchanged sports teams with the USA for diplomatic reasons. What is this sport in which players hit a ball with small rackets over the net into the opponent's side? The name of a sport. Number four. Hockey? Nope. China famous for this sport. Small table, small net, small ball, small rackets. Okay, number 13, if you get this right, you're gonna be the last contestant to go on to the next round. Do you think you have the right answer? Table tennis. Good table day. tennis! <laughs> also known as ping pong. Yes, table tennis, very good at it. I think I'll play some after this. Maybe, uh, Tommy and I can play a little table tennis, a little ping pong after the show's over, but we have more rounds to go. And I want to thank Tommy for uh, wearing that dress and bringing in the props. Thank you, but I actually, I think I'm going to change, you know, go learn some kung fu, you know, some kung fu moves. Okay, well, uh, I'll see you next week then. Bye. Jai Jen. Okay, we got to go to the next round. Let's go! <laughs> Get ready for the almost final round where these fives will compete for one spot. We need to find a school champion and then see if that school champion can be a super kid. Of these five, one will get the highest score. We'll get to that in a second. First, please meet our five participants. So they did a great job. 
They've been through many challenges, and that's why they begin with 100 points apiece. Every wrong answer is minus zero. That's right. Only right answers, we give more points. 10, 20, and 30 points. And as you may know, you each have a chance. Use it wisely. Double the score, the value of the category. If it's 30 points, it becomes 60. 20 points, you want to press your buzzer down and use your chance, that's fine. That's your choice. It becomes 40 then, if you get it right. Guess wrong? Put the chance down. Now let's see our categories. We got uh, Global Friends, one of my favorites. Magic is very cool. Behind one of these is a bonus prize. I don't know where it is. Whoever gets it right, regardless of score, gets that big prize. All right, let's go to a 10-pointer, the category, Who Am I? Who am I? I have eight children and around 170 grandchildren. You can only see me for half a day. I am a very big ball with a diameter of 1,390,000 kilometers. If you spend too much time with me, you will turn red. Yes, 14? Son. Is that the right answer? Yeah! In the summertime, you better protect your skin. You might turn red. Very good. Sun is the right answer, 14. And I heard you like to read. Yeah. Do you have a favorite book? Yeah. Which is? Moby Dick. Hoo-ha! That's a big one. OK. Please choose a category. Soul. Seoul. For 20 points. In the central district of Seoul, there are many streets that are named after famous people in history. This street is one of them. It is named after Admiral Yi Sun Shin of the Joseon Dynasty. It has become the street that represents the movie making industry of Korea. What is the name of this street? Number 14 again. Chungmuro. Yeah, Chungmuro. <laughs> You got it. Represents the movie uh, making industry in Korea. Excellent job. You're on a roll, 14. Keep on going. Mm. Animal. Animal for 10 points. Back up to the 10 category. Here it is. Buddha is known by the name Siddhartha Gautama and Shakyamuni. Before his birth, his mother, Queen Mahamaya, had a dream about this animal. So this animal is often seen in Buddhist culture. What is this animal? Number 21. Elephant. Is that the right answer? Yeah. OK. Now, 14 likes to read books. And I heard 21, you like to write. Yeah. Have you written any stories? Yeah, I write only two stories. And what have you written about? It is about the sweets. Sweets like candy? Yeah. That sounds really neat. OK, well, hopefully we'll all read your book someday. Right now, <laughs> you have a mission. Choose a category. 10 point magic. Magic for 10 points. That means it's time for us to invite our favorite magician. Come on, guys. Get ready. Let's invite out Kim jong Hello everyone and welcome to the world of magic and like to say hi to our friends from Jamjin Elementary School. Hello everyone! Hi! I heard that soon summer vacation and I'm sure you all have good plans, but one of my favorite things to do during vacation time is going to a theme park. Now, do you, like, do you guys like to go to a theme park? Yeah! Uh, how about you and your white, uh, the girl in the white shirt? What's your favorite ride? The Viking? The merry-go-round or like anything? Merry-go-round, merry-go-round, me, 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 merry-go-round. Oh, you like a merry-go-round. Yeah. Well, for me, I love to jump from high places, like the bungee drop. And do you know what you need when you drop from a high place? What do you need? 
A rope? No, let me tell you the answer. If you're going to jump down from high places, you need three handkerchiefs. Red, blue, and yellow. And what you do is you put first the yellow inside here, like this. Next, you're going to need to put in blue. Last, but not least, you're going to need to put in red. All together, like this. And as I told you, what you need when you jump down from high places is called... It's called... An umbrella! Oh. Now, here is today's quiz. As you just heard, Isaac loves to go on a merry-go-round. Now, Isaac is riding on the merry-go-round. So listen carefully and then answer. Today's question, now Isaac is riding on the merry-go-round. In front of him, there are seven horses. Behind him, there are seven horses. So how many horses are there on this merry-go-round? 21. There are 14 horses. 14 horses, is that right? Yeah. No. Yes, three. Eight. She says eight, is that right? Yes, it is! That's right! It's because a merry-go-round goes round and round. In front of Isaac, there are seven horses behind. It goes around, and the trick question is, Isaac was on that merry-go-round, so right. Isaac was on a horse. So, I'll see you next time. See you at the theme park. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Um, I love his magic. Something about the logic, though, if you're going to do a bungee jump, unless you're Mary Poppins, you might need more than that uh, umbrella. But it's a magical umbrella. Who knows? Let's go to the next question. Let's see. Number three, you got it right, so you get to choose. Music. Music. 30 points. Anybody going to use their chance? If you want to go for it, press your buzzer down. <gasps> oh! 21's going for it. Put up your chance. Anybody else? Go for it. 14's going to go for it. All right. For you guys, it's worth 60 if you get it right. 13 and 23, it's worth 30. Good luck to all of you. Here's the music question. His father was a cartwheel maker, but he was raised at a relative's house to study music from the age of six. He eventually grew up to be called the father of symphonies and composed many great symphonies, including The Seasons, that you are listening to now. The creation... Number 14. Vivaldi. Is it Vivaldi? If he's right, he would get um, 60 points! Oh. I'll give three seconds, and then I will re-say the question. Three, two, one. You're all alive again. Yes, 14. Haydn. He says Haydn. If he's right, we're 30 points. Is it Haydn? Yes, it is! Yeah. Excellent job. Friends, Joseph Haydn. 14, do you play an instrument? I can play piano. Piano. And you like books. Yes. Very good. You're in the lead right now. Even though it was chosen by number three, you got it. OK. So please choose another category. Words. Words. Whoa, bonus question. Go! <laughs> Right now, 14's in the lead with 160 points. It doesn't matter. Whoever gets this right, whoever answers it, is the person who receives this prize. Of course, a couple points, too. Let's get to words. What word commonly fits in all the blanks? Blank way. Some blank. Air Force blank. 
one word fits in all of those blanks. A common word. When you put that word in, they all make sense. My way? Some my, oh, 14? One. One? Yeah! Whoa! Good job. And you got that and you're further in the lead. One way, someone and Air Force One. Whew. Okay, well, let's look. We've got 10, 20, and 30 point questions. A couple of you still have your chance left. Um, right now, 14 is definitely in the lead. 14, please choose another category. Art. 30 points again. Does anybody want it? Chance, no chance? No chance? Pure 30 pointer? Let's go to the category of art. This art technique became popular when the surrealist painter Oscar Dominguez started using it. It used paint spread thinly on a sheet of paper or other surface, which is then pressed onto another surface such as a canvas. What is it called? 21. Oh yeah! Good job! Decalcomania. Sounds like you're crazy about decals. Decalcomania. Uh, wow. I haven't done this. I just did some stuff with brushes. Uh, do you like Art 21? Um, some part, but not painting. Okay. All right. Well, right now you're in second place. Let's look real quick at the scoreboard. Right now, number three, 110. 13, 100. 14, our leader right now, 21, 140 and 23 also 100. Okay, so 21, you know what to do. Remaining categories, choose one. Origin. A 10-pointer, origin, our last 10-pointer. Let's get to it. The origin of this word comes from the ancient Roman building for chariot races. Today, it is a performance that includes acrobatic movements, trained animals, and clown shows. What is this? A place where you see clowns and performers and acrobats. 21. Circus. Circus? Yeah! <laughs> I like merry-go-rounds, and I like circuses as well. OK, you're increasing. The distance between you and number one, not so far away. Next choice. Um, performance. Performance for 30 points. Anybody? Chance? No chance? No chance. 30 points. Performance. Here it is. This is an additional performance requested by the audience who applaud to show that they enjoyed the performance. It comes from the French word that means again. It is even used in plays and movies that are shown again after receiving good reviews. Yes, 14. Encore. Encore. Yeah! Very good! Whoa! Um. 21 was catching up for a little while, and then boom, another big one. Okay, 14. Three categories, two 20 pointers, one 30 pointer. What's it gonna be? Human body. Human body. All right. This is one of the elements that make up the human body. Our flesh, hair, and nails are mainly made of this. Along with fat and carbohydrates, a person must consume this to live. It is rich in foods like meat and beans. What is this? What is it? It's something your body really needs, and I believe it begins with the letter P. Anything? Five seconds.
Answer is protein. Yeah, I know. You guys will go, oh, man, if you had more protein, it would help your brains. You want to become a super kid, you need your protein. Okay, I'll calm down. I need some protein. Okay, 14, please choose another category. Global friends. Global friends. Anybody? Chance, no chance? Go for it. Okay, gentlemen. For you, it's worth 40 points. For you, it's worth 40. Let's, let's travel somewhere around the world and meet another friend of Super Kids. Hello, Super Kids. I'm Dan from New York City. It's a place where the Hudson River flows into the Atlantic Ocean. There are many islands in this area. Now, here is your question. The name of this island comes from the name of American Native tribe who used to live in this area. It is commercial and cultural center of New York. What is the name of this island that is located where the Hudson River and the East River meet? Manhattan. Is it Manhattan? Good job. Manhattan's right. Pretty exciting place, a lot of culture there. Definitely the center, the heart of New York, where New York City is, but it's actually an island, Manhattan Island. Okay, one category left. We have the category of substance. Interesting. I don't know what it's going to be. We'll find out. It's worth 20 points. Here it is. Marbles made of this can be found in artifacts from 6,000 years ago. So people presume that the history of this goes back to prehistoric times. Lime, magnesium oxide. Number 21. Glass. Yeah. Glass. Oh, uh, yeah! Oh, very good. You know, it's always exciting to see good competition. And 14 and 21 battled it out. Very good round for everybody. Congratulations. But it is 14 who is our school champion today and will go to the final round. have done a great job so far. As we've traveled to the spot, what was the most challenging part for you? Uh, okay. Questions about China, huh? Yeah. Did you ever go to China? Yeah. Was it fun? Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna travel, not to China, but here, a yeah. path to find the master word. You're gonna choose a letter connected to, of course, a word puzzle. You'll get hints. Hopefully get all the words, which are going to reveal maximum three letters in the master word. I'll give you two hints. You get two seconds. Hopefully you become a super kid today. It's not easy. Not easy. Yeah. Now, if you hear a hint and you don't know the answer, just say pass. Maximum of three times. And then got to wait five seconds. Boom. It'll reveal to you the answer. Any questions? No. Okay. Let's see the three letters. N, O, and S. Yeah. What's your choice? Noise. Uh. Don't read it. I needed to choose a letter. Hmm. O. Okay. Good luck. Acorns grow on this tree. Oak. This body part filters and removes bad things from our blood. Pass. Birds lay this. Egg. The eighth month of the year. August. You wear this over a shirt or a blouse.
a pot that holds flowers. Best. It has become a symbol of love. Heart. People like musicians, painters, and actors. Okay, pretty good job. Now you got two letters. Having the first letter does help, but you got two letters. Now, as I said before, I'm gonna give you two hints. In 10 seconds, here is the first hint. Breath. Second hint is read. 10 seconds. Okay, let's reveal that final word. Harmonica. Yeah, good job. <laughs> well, it's not easy, but you had a good time? Yeah. And did you guys have a good time? Yeah! We love to hear that. And hopefully you enjoyed yourself and don't mind coming back for another round of Super Kids next time. Bye bye! Super Kids has some really great prizes to give away. A notebook computer for the Super Kid. A digital camera for the quiz champion. MP3 players for second to fifth place winners. And Child U Online Education one month membership for everyone on the show.